Hi, I'm Russell Peterson, Technical Support and Training Manager here at Winston Wallboards. Welcome to the training bay. Today we're going to step through how to repair a large hole in your wall. For this you'll need the following, spatula and bucket for mixing compound, 150mm broad knife, sanding block, preferably 220 grit, a sharp craft knife, 280mm trowel, jib compound and tape. With a larger hole, we need to replace this piece and take the cut right through to the nearest stud. So we've got a fixing point. And the other side, we're going to put in a back blocking strip. The first step is to find out where your stud is. We're going to mark out on the wall where we're going to cut out that piece. So now we've marked out our hole, we're just going to use a normal standing knife to cut out this piece. You'll need to score it a couple of times to get through, and the point is you just want to keep this cut nice and tidy. So now we've got our piece out, we just want to tidy up this inside edge. Now our hole's been cleaned out, we just want to measure to cut the new piece. So now we've cut our piece, we just want to tidy up these edges so it's going to fit nice and snug into the hole. So now let's see if it fits. Perfect. We've got fixing on this edge. But we're going to cut a little strip of plasterboard to use as a back blocking strip to give the support to this edge. Our back blocking strip is just going to sit behind that edge, about 50mm either side of the cut. We're going to glue this with either Trade Set 20 or Cove Bond. So why we use a jib compound is it gives you your most reliable paper to paper bond. Today I'm going to use Trade Set 20 because it sets really fast. Rip the top off the bag and then we're going to start with water first and then add the powder. Just add the powder slowly so we don't make up too much. You don't want to make it too stiff, otherwise it won't adhere properly. So we're just going to put a little blob on here, we don't need much. Put the block in. Just apply a bit of firm pressure, give it a wriggle, make sure it's well bedded in, and now we're going to let it dry. Now that our back block is dry, we're going to put in our patch. But before we do, we just want to prepare the painted surface for when we do the stopping. We do this with a bit of sandpaper and just lightly scuff up the surface. So for gluing the patch in, I'm going to use Jib Fix 1. We're going to apply this directly to the framing. So just with little blobs, not strips. We're just placing the patch in, give it a little wriggle, make sure it's bedded in. If you want to, you can pop some screws in there to hold it in place while it dries. 
And so now we're ready to do our stopping. Today I'm gonna to use the jib rock tape, or you can use the jib paper tape. I'm gonna start with cutting this to suit the hole. It's easiest to cut your strips first, just in case your compound goes off quickly. Because it's a painted surface, we recommend to use an air drying compound for your bedding in. It just sticks to the painted surface better than a trade set. So first of all, we're just gonna spread a bit of compound around and then we're gonna bed our tape into it. If you haven't done stopping before, here's a trick. You wanna try and get your tape half on that cut line. You wanna do a thin layer, bed this in, and then do a thin layer over the top and that's it. Don't play with the compound too much. Don't try and get it perfect. Just leave it, we'll scrape off the excess later. So that's our base coat done. We're gonna let it dry now. It could take a day or two depending on the weather and the humidity. Once it's dry, we're gonna ideally do two more top coats with the same compound. And we're back now that it's dry. We've let it dry for over 24 hours because it's a bit cold at the moment. You'll notice that there's some ridges and lumps and you can see the rock tape fiber coming through. That's okay because we're gonna give it a scrape off with the trowel to prepare it for that top coat. The trick with the plastering trowel is we don't want to dig the corners in too much. We just don't want to take it down too low, otherwise we'll expose too much of that tape fiber. The end result means we want to spread over a whole area without being built up too much. So it feels pretty good. If you want to, you can give it a sand with a light grit sandpaper, like a 180 or a 200 and a block, but don't get too carried away. Before we apply our top coat, we just want to give it a quick dust off. We're going to use the same compound as our base coat. And the plan is to cover this whole area and feather the edges out quite far so you won't notice that lump. As you're applying the compound, use a cross-hatching motion. That way you won't build up in one spot too much. The end game is to feather your edges out so that you don't have any ridges or lines. This makes it easier to sand at the end before we paint. So we've applied our compound to this area. We want to make sure there's enough coverage over the tape and we have it feathered out to the edges, but don't overwork the surface too much. You may see some pinholing, that's okay. You may need a third coat. Just repeat this process again and let it dry. Air drying compound works best if you let it dry naturally with natural airflow. Try to avoid using fan heaters or hair dryers because you get better adhesion to the layer underneath and better long-term result. And we'll let this dry 12 to 24 hours. Okay, that's all dry. Now it's time for sanding. To keep it easy, I'm gonna just use a sanding pad. These are readily available at your local merchant. And you wanna use about 220 grit. We're gonna start in the middle. 
with gentle circular motions. And then we're going to do a cross hatching motion. That's just to make sure we don't stay in one spot too long. Make sure you're really gentle. Don't dig in, otherwise we'll get gouge marks or scratch marks. You want to pay particular attention to the edges where the compound is feathered out. We don't want to leave any ridges there. So just gently follow that edge around. Make sure we get it all smoothly transitioned from plaster to paint. While you're sanding, sometimes it's hard to see if there's any lumps or ridges or bumps. So sometimes it's a good idea to feel it with your hand. Feels good to me. Now it's time to dust it off and prepare for paint. Let's paint. You should do a second coat. I recommend you do the whole wall so it all blends in. It's looking really good. And that's how you replace a large hole in your wall.